welcome back to episode two of something we are currently calling the untitled, unauthorized Sonic IDW podcast. Will this be what the actual title is when the video comes out? I have no idea, but we're going with it. Hello, it is me, your host, Stefan, aka Games Enlisted, alongside my co-host, David T. Lurker. Oh, oh, that's me. Hello, hi. Uh, yes, David T. Lurker here, sitting ready, willing, and able to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. Because what else is there to talk about? The answer's nothing. It's always Sonic. <laughs> we are here, once again, talking about the IDW Sonic the Hedgehog series. We had recorded the first episode... A while ago, because it was you aren't you aren't seeing you're going to be seeing them back to back. But we recorded that a while ago as our like pilot testing the waters, so to speak. But now, right. because it's the fifth anniversary, get get getting the rest of them out. So now, as part of episode two, we are here talking about issues five to eight of the comic, otherwise known as volume two, the fate of Doctor Eggman. Oh. And as an, as a little extra incentive for this podcast. We're gonna be trying. We're gonna be trying to bring on some guests to join us in talking about it. So it isn't just me. So it isn't just me and David regurgitating a lot of the same thoughts. We're gonna bring in other people to share their own feelings about the comic as a whole, other versions of the comic, this particular arc, so to speak. And for this for this episode, we've got a little special uh, guest uh, guest with us. You know him as a man of many talents. He is a future Tony Award-winning stage actor, frequently seen in the San Francisco area in various plays, including recently Pride and Prejudice. He is the biggest Snatcher fan you will ever know, a connoisseur in all things wrestling, part-time owner of the Green Bay Packers, the founder of the Sega of Virgin Islands, and what most of you know him as, the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 2, ladies and gentlemen, Skyler, Sega Sky, King. You are making a big mistake if you think I'm an incentive for people, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm here. I have read comic book arts and words and panels, and I will discuss them. Cool. Awesome. Right. So to start, <laughs> so to start this off, uh, what is your experience with? Sonic the Hedgehog in comic book form, whether that's this Archie, Fleetway, what, whatever. What what is your experience uh, history with Sonic comics? I recall when I was younger, somebody gave me. I think it might have been one of my old teachers, as a matter of fact, gave me a box of old Archie comics, and I remember specifically stuff like uh, Sonic Blast, Sonic. Did they make a triple trouble one? Am I confusing that with another one? No, they did. I don't know. It, it was. It, it, it might have been that. It might have been a Sonic versus Knuckles thing. I never was a subscriber though. And with IDW, I've learned that in my old age of thirty-one, I'm assuming is when this will come out. Um, I'm twenty-two right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're only twenty-two years old. That's right. You were born. I think your birthday is the same. Day as uh, Sonic, well, uh, I was gonna say Sonic Adventure Two, but I guess no, no, <laughs> no, yes, no, it is it's true. <laughs> you are <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Look, but, um, with IDW, <laughs> I started and then I fell off, as I do with every comic series I try to jump into. It's not their fault; it's me. I'm the problem. Oh, I I, I honestly feel you because I. W I mean, in Jeff, for a lot of comics, I was I was like the one keeping like up with everything. But uh, lately, I mean, as of this current point, as, as of this current recording point, I'm like about ten comics behind. So it's like, yeah, even now I've got to. I mean, I'm getting them all, but I've gotten to a point of like, oops, I just keep forgetting to read them. So it's like you, when you're when you get to a certain age, yeah, everything just kind of like you just kind of lose all. Uh, like downhole, just everything. Where, where, where did you uh, like last? If you can remember, what was I the last uh, like arc or issue? I think maybe like five issues from where we're stopping here. <laughs> oh, so like, oh. So like thirteen, fourteen ish. Yeah. I remember Battle for Angel Island. Spoilers, but um, yeah, I think the start of the next arc was when I just fell off. Uh, 
Well, that... Which honestly, th- this which honestly that 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 does help for this, considering like the point of this uh, the point of this podcast is more so just to mainly focus on the individual arcs like themselves rather than the story as a whole. So the fact that you're so like behind in a lot of ways kind of helps because you can be like, oh, you can only focus on right. this, like this one arc as his and you don't know, like you don't have any bias of the future of the story. You can just be like, oh, man, what could happen next? Right. You can judge this arc uh, as itself, as itself. And I think, I think that does uh, help out uh, yeah. in this, in this uh, context. Meanwhile, I'm full of bias. Yes. Uh <laughs> I, well, I am. You've got thirty plus years of bias. I, d- I do. Up. That's true. Uh, right. I am. I am. I think two issues behind at the moment. But yeah. So one of the joys of being a comic book reader and a comic book collector is buying more comics than you'll ever read. So you know, that's just that's just part and parcel of of the whole comic gig. I think. Oh, sorry to interject. I just remembered. I also read a comic where Mina Mongoose died. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't remember. Who that just popped dying. in my head. I don't know. Maybe she came back or something, but maybe I forget. I forget what happened, but I remember the last panel, and she's like in bed on her deathbed. She says, "Like, oh, I'll get over it," and then it says, "Mina Mongoose," and then these two years. I don't know. Somebody go find that for us. I don't. (laughs) Yeah, there it is. She's dead, guys. Well, I'm trying to remember offhand. That's about. Yeah, the only thing I can rem- yeah the only thing I can remember of that is because there there's the issue I think it's around the one fifty ish when like uh like Fang is trying to assassinate her I think there there is uh, that is yeah maybe that for is. what it's worth it's pre Genesis wave if that helps yeah yeah that that that, that, that was pre Ian Flynn too right because like, yeah. I mean also Mina Mongoose ceases to exist after the Genesis uh, wave she is see that's yeah. how little I know. <laughs> right. Well, if this was an Archie she, she's podcast, a we could, creation. yeah, we could dive in real deep, but that's a little off topic. So we'll have to go into it later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, of what? Of anything that you can remember? Read like of anything that you remember reading of Archie Sonic? Do you, is there any like particular like uh, arcs or stories that you like? Be like, oh, I really like that one. Like that 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 that's one of my favorites. Genesis was cool. Genesis is cool. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's all I got. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, wor- no worries. <laughs> oh yeah, there there was Supersonic versus Hyper Knuckles at one point, right? Yes, oh, that uh, was one of the specials. Yes, yes. I, I I like how you're just you're, you're you're naming random specials from the '90s, and then yeah, and then an arc from 2011, and you're like, I think oh, and then there was the one that was included in Mega Collection, Sonic First, I think it was, was it? Yeah, Sonic First. That's or- technically that was the first trade paperback released. Uh, of Archie Sonic, and then it was republished as Sonic Super Special Number Three, which is funny. Nice. I guess they were like, "We've got, we've got nothing. Let's just make it a comic as well." Oh, Silly. David, remember that time you saw my Zoom play and I dropped a Sonic Comics reference in it for you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that, was a, that was a good time. I forget yeah, the name they'll... of the play though, but I remember uh, you there. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> I try to block out pandemic theater as much as I can. <laughs> what was the reference, if you can remember? Um, the line was something like, oh, how brave new world. But <laughs> when with David and Kat were watching, and I said, oh, how Sonic Super Special 2 brave new world, or something like that. <laughs> right, it was, <laughs> it, it was something like that. I don't think it was as obtuse as you saying, remember in Sonic the Hedgehog, the comic <laughs> issue number 63, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes yes right right um yeah wait so if you stopped reading idw at around issue 13 i guess that is that was before uh the pandemic so it's not like that interrupted your flow because for me that interrupted my flow of comics for a while because i That's wasn't i wasn't going to the comic shop i wasn't buying comics i wasn't reading so i was just like ah, oh. and then once you could go back it uh yeah i i haven't been buying nearly as many comics as i used to so we'll, but that doesn't mean i won't just haven't but sonic the hedgehog <laughs> Ooh. 
All right. Yep. So, I mean, in comparison, last episode, we had a pretty long start because we were discussing, of course, like the intro and start up mm-hmm. to the series and like every and the backstory. But like for this one and of for, probably depend, I mean, knowing us, it could go either way. But I imagine <laughs> the episodes would probably be shorter because like, oh, mm-hmm. we don't really have as much of like behind stuff. We just kind of talk about people's this like Sonic comic history. And then we just literally jump right into the arc. Three so, hours later. Just like with... <laughs> <laughs> just like with last one uh let me let me go and uh let's uh introduce uh introduce the arc with a little with a little quote unquote little summary <laughs> the fate of dr eggman issues five to eight released between may 2018 and august 2018 written by ian flynn issues five and six pencils by tracy yardley inks by jim amash colors by matt herms Issue 7, Meet the New Boss, Art and Colors by Adam Bryce Thomas. Issue 8, Silent Support, Art by Evan Stanley, Colors by Matt Herms, and Letters by Corey Breen and Sean Lee. Sonic is escorted by Espio to a small town where he learns that he and the Chaotix have managed to track down Eggman, only to discover as a result of the last battle, he suffers from amnesia and believes himself to be a simple toy maker known as Mr. Tinker. Sonic finds it suspicious, but the Chaotix and the rest of the townsfolk vouch for his new change of personality, and after seeing him protect the civilians from a badnik attack, Sonic trusts in the change. Mr. Tinker reveals he's working on a new Eggman land, which is followed by the sudden appearance of Shadow and Rouge. Shadow wants to take Eggman out once and for all, leading Sonic to defend him and chase that Shadow out of the village. Rouge reveals she was the one who tipped the Chaotix off to Eggman's location to help alleviate the situation. Sonic and Shadow fight over what to do with Eggman, with Sonic attempting to reason to spare Eggman, using Shadow's past to convince him to stop. Shadow quickly teleports back to the village to confront Mr. Tinker about his Eggman land, which turned out to be nothing more than a little play place, so he reluctantly leaves. Meanwhile, another Dr. Eggman, who has been the one in command of Eggman's forces, activates the Egg Fleet to prepare the next part of their plan. Sonic and Tails climb onto the fleet where he confronts the fake Doctor, revealing him to be none other than Neo Metal Sonic. He was rebuilt during the events of the war, but was completed too late and has taken control of the Eggman Empire to reign until Eggman returns. Sonic fights Metal, but thanks to his capability to copy biodata, he and the Egg Fleet's defenses are able to overpower him enough to force him to retreat. Sonic reports the discovery of the Resistance HQ so they can plan their next form of attack, while Metal prepares to raid the unguarded Angel Island. Later, Sonic storms the Eggman base looking for information alongside Silver, where they are assisted by a mystery ally in the shadows. Silver recognizes them as the legendary Guardian Angel, someone who helped them turn the tide of battle many times but never joined the Resistance. He also reveals that he had originally come to the past to stop a future where the Eggman Empire ruled all, but now has discovered a future where nothing but metallic plant life remains and has returned to the past to fix it. Sonic and Silver meet the Guardian Angel, a shy wolf known as Whisper, who primarily uses Wisp in the battle. The three enter the heart of the base and destroy all the robots, with Sonic learning Whisper as a particular vendetta against Eggman for some unknown reason. They access the to learn Metal's plan, taking control of the Master Emerald and Angel Island, which he has already successfully done. Whew! Whoa! Wow. So this one definitely has a lot more plot than the first four issues, which were, like we had, like we talked about, were very heavy in setup and just reintroducing things. But now we've now we've got to the point where we are we are still reintroducing stuff, like we introduced the Chaotix, Shadow and Rouge, mm-hmm. Silver, and Metal Sonic. But now we also have, like, going far into the story of being like, here's what the plot's going on. Here's, like, what the act, what this quote-unquote, like, this, the first 12-issue arc is going going about and revealing the truth behind, oh, who the master villain is. And just overall, like, leading into the next arc, which is the big, like, climax, the climax of the, of this, like, the th- this three, three-part saga, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now it it is um, things start moving forward. Right. Yeah. Because I mean the first four issues, well there there was some fun mo- moments. It really was like it's sort of repeating the same thing over and over. At least in these four, uh, different things are happening. Um, so that that's that's one point in the uh, moving the story forward column. Uh, yeah. It it um. Okay, well, um, I don't quite remember how we talked about it last time. Did we go through it issue by issue, or did we just kind of jump around? I... It was ba- <laughs> it was it was mostly like it, it was it was it was kind of like a two and four. Like we, we if, if we if there was something relevant, we would jump around. But for the most part, we just talk about like yeah. So like yeah. So say for issue five is the one with the reveal of oh where was Eggman in the last arc, and the reveal is oh. He lost after the events of forces. He got amnesia and now believes to be uh, just yeah, just a, a guy, a guy named Mister Tinker. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I guess five and six. They that's really that's one right after the other. That's that's your Mister Tinker stuff. So, uh, and then I, seven and eight sort of stand alone. I mean, I guess you know, yeah, eight is after seven, but 
those are more standalone sort of stories. But five and six, it's, it's kind of hard to talk about one without talking about the other. It, it, this is like a, a classic two-parter, essentially. A two-parter in yeah. a four-parter in a 12-parter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> even down to the point that they're both, they're like both five and six are called the fate of Doctor Eggman. Like the whole thing, yeah. like the whole vo- volume two is called that, but those two are specifically called that, and they both share the same creative team with Yardley and Amash doing the pen, Yardley Amash and Kerms doing the art for that, while seven and eight have different art teams. Right. But yeah, it, it is a thing of like, yeah, you would get do We 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 got, we got more of the chaotix again. It's like, oh, it's a nice see in the chaotix. The Eggman stuff. The Eggman stuff is like. uh Oh, it, it, I think it, I think it's a, it's an interesting uh, like thing to take it of being like oh like we want to do something different with Eggman be like let let's try, especially because th- a little bit of this arc and then especially later on in the future kind of deals with like in in a lot of ways the morality of Eggman and being all like oh like what's going on in Eggman's head like what is he doing like what what should he be doing so kind of seeing like oh what does a good Eggman look like be all like oh and then it kind of like has sonic like kind of uh facing that and be like oh like what what is his uh opinion on uh like what a good Eggman is yeah he's the fixer upper he's a nice fella <laughs> and and to kind of jump into my trivia bag uh early uh-huh. uh his mr tinker design uh is uh reminiscent of the original teddy roosevelt design from sonic one oh ah, i i kind of see it Right, yeah, because Eggman, well, like when that concept art was drawn, he was originally envisioned as a potential hero character, as the main protagonist that you would play as. Uh, so it, it is, it's kind of neat that oh, we're re- revisiting the i the that early concept art for a version of Eggman who is not a villain. He is just Mister Tinker, and he sure looks jolly. Um, <laughs> and wears he's slippers. Sleepy. He, he's a sleepy man. Well, that's why he's wearing sli- slippers all the time. Yeah. He wants to go to bed. Uh, I guess he refuses to wear socks. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, <laughs> not to focus too much on his feet. Uh, no, <laughs> oh, no. All right, let's go. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, I think... The, the the chaotix again just make me like I love them but I'm also like why are you the only people in the Sonic universe that struggle with money <laughs> why why is it everybody else has no problem Eggman has an infinite amount of resources mm-hmm. like everybody else has is perfectly fine despite not having jobs you guys are the only ones with jobs <laughs> and struggle with money what are you doing wrong Look, dude, they're on that grind set, all right? <laughs> they got to solve mysteries. They got to pay that rent. Ooh, actually, you know, who's their landlord? I want to talk to exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah, we've never we've never seen, like, who who are they paying, <laughs> like, to live in the house? Nobody else has to pay anything to live. Tails doesn't need to pay anybody <laughs> for his, for his like, lab. I mean, that we know of. Sonic? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sonic is the chaotic <laughs> landlord. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, if Sonic was their landlord, I think he would be nice and just let them hang out there. He'd be like, "Yeah, just pay me in chili dogs," and that would be it. Um, he wouldn't. Right. I mean, because I guess we could talk about like the idea of money in the Sonic universe has always been fuzzy. The money. The money, right? I know there was a With apparently the there was a point in time where Sega was like, "Oh, just avoid talking about money unless it's a character that's already established that they talk about money, i.e., the Chaotix." Um, but we know money exists, but also it is still vague because, like, you know, in, in Sonic 06, you can go to a shop and buy something or are unleashed, but you're buying things with rings, and rings are everywhere, and you just collect rings. So then, like, what is currency? What is like? How does the economy work? It's probably better to not think about that, but <laughs> then you do have the chaotic <laughs> who struggle, um, because I know it's uh, right in issue uh, six they make the comment of like, because um, I I think Rouge is like oh yeah you know don't worry about my finders fee or something and they're like yeah we we couldn't yeah, we, afford we, that <laughs> exactly like, we you know what afford I think to split it is. It. I think after Vector found God, he went to church, and he always wants to donate to the collection plate. And he <laughs> donates too much, and so that's why he's always broke and struggling for money. That, 
<laughs> that could be it. I also need to say that I love, I like, I absolutely love what the f- what the conclusion to Vector Finding God like plot line was. Was me tweet was me tweeting out being all like, oh hey, Vector Finding God is canon in the Sonic Encyclopedia, and then Ian Flynn responds to it being all like, oh yeah, did you know the reason it is that because he was a Blues Brothers reference, and then I went oh, what. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just my mind is like, oh, because he's on a mission for God, from God. It's like, oh, it's so genius. So <laughs> ge- and, and, he's, and he's a musician. It's like, oh, that's so brilliant. Ian Flynn, you've done it again. It's like, he, although I mean, that, 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 that's not Ian Flynn. That, that's him addressing something that was, that was whoever does, whoever designed Vector, uh, do yeah, you, but uh, if, but if he's the one who made who made it known more uh, widespread, yeah, he made it known. Yes, right. yeah, he 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 he's he's telling every he, he's spreading the word of God. <laughs> right. I mean, Vector was originally designed by by Oshima, but I I don't know if he's the one who added the the hat and the shades in that one. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, well, yeah. Whoever whoever was the designer in Chaotix, yeah, who who created the backstory, right? Yeah, oh. that that it was him. Yeah, right. Well, I guess technically. Yeah, it would have been between uh, Sonic One and Chaotix, and they gave him the shades and and the <laughs> when they broke up the band. Yeah, when, when, when they, when, broke, when up they the... broke up the band. Yeah, he was on a mission from God, and then that's how he became a detective. <laughs> right, and so he tried to get the band back together, but unlike the Blues Brothers, he was unsuccessful, and that's why he defaulted to becoming a detective, <laughs> just stealing <laughs> Espio's job. He's like, "Oh, I'll do that," and he's like, "What?" But <laughs> that's how I. Uh, yeah, this bee can come along too, I guess. <laughs> uh, look, look, look at the, uh, for the, these four issues. I do kind of like that they all kind of have like a similar uh, structure of oh, there, there's like like a bit bit like a, a lot of plot and like story and reveals, which is also built into an action sequence. So like you yeah. got yeah, you have like the reveal of Mister Tinker and then the action like the action sequence with the badniks and then also the little stuff at the beginning when Espio is taking Sonic uh to the location you have like those little like the areas that they're fighting through then you get uh the yeah Sonic and Shadow's fight alongside like oh the plot of oh is Eggman like is is he is he really have amnesia is he faking it then issue 7 has the big the fight against uh you have the reveal with Neo Metal Sonic and the fight uh with them two and then issue 8 has the stuff with Silver and Whisper, and then the whole fight and thing. So it, they they do a good job of of balancing, yeah, story and action uh, in these four. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and then to go back, I, I I've been kind of I've been I've been I've been stalling, but we we should we should just pull the bandaid off. That is Shadow. Shadow. Uh. Shadow's had a hard time in this comic in general uh, to foreshadow, and uh, I won't talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> But yeah, we we will we won't talk about the future because there there is a lot more. Yeah, there's a lot more. We can all try to change the past. <laughs> Except Shadow never does when he has access to time travel. But that's beside the point. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I I guess it's like okay, so they want Shadow to be what kind of okay? So Shadow is is Sonic's rival. He's a little bit Vegeta y, but. But like, angry Vegeta instead of sometimes when Vegeta's not as angry, right? <laughs> like it feels like it feels like current Shadow, at least like the, like the Sega's ideal version of current Shadow uh-huh. is like Dragon Ball Z Vegeta versus Super Vegeta, because like Super right. Vegeta is like a dick, but like he's <laughs> he's he's enough to the point of like oh, there are certain things that kind of pacify him slightly that he can go along with. Where like sure. Z is just he is just a one hundred percent a dick, and then he'll like he'll sabotage things just if 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 he doesn't feel like just just whatever like like he feels like at the moment. Because like yeah, Shadow Shadow's whole thing Shadow whole thing is basically being like I gotta stop Doctor Eggman right here and right now, and Sonic's being like no, he's fine, just don't worry about it, and then. Yeah, Shadow. It's, it's just the the fight, the whole like fighting thing of just oh, he's not listening and everything and all that stuff. And then it gets to the point where he's like, oh, I guess I'll just leave him behind. And then he leaves. It's like yeah, he he's very one note, and it is yeah, it is uh, it is a very like no, it, I would say like not no, it it is very open. I was gonna say it's a known secret, but at this point, it's not even a secret. It's just it is common knowledge that Sega are the ones being all like. You have to write Shadow in this specific way, and 
Mm-hmm. Ian and future writers are basically like, well, we, we're just going to have to do like, again, to pull in through my trivia, because this is very, again, this is very important to this point. Uh, 90% of Shadow's dialogue in this issue had to be cut because Sega didn't want, uh, so basically, uh, to, to quote Ian, uh, Shadow doesn't debate, speak his mind, or state his opinion. He just does. Uh-huh. So that's Sega's that's okay. Sega's opinion of Shadow's character. I feel like he says a lot about uh, his... He talks a lot about how he doesn't have opinions in Shadow the Hedgehog the game, where he's like, I don't know who I am. I'm debating with <laughs> everyone to figure that out. So it is weird that Sega's like, oh, so Shadow won't. And I, you know, in, in Sonic 06, Shadow's a bit more introspective, right? Like, he he does a lot of doing, but he does a lot of talking. I feel like there's there's more... I don't know why I'm questioning Sega. Probably because... Yeah. <laughs> how dare you? How dare I question Sega? Sega knows th- <laughs> what's best. Um, I, ju- I guess I just find it weird. I guess it's because when, you know, I, I, I guess especially at this point in time, they're like, hey, we want the, the franchise to kind of be... Uh, you know, solidified across the board, the movie universe being the exception. And it's like, hey, we want these characters to be certain archetypes. If somebody picks up any issue, Sonic the Hedgehog, they can easily recognize, like, oh, Sonic's the the cool hero who, you know, has uh, faith and and trust in his friends, but he, you know, he he doesn't... uh, he doesn't stutter. He doesn't stop. He's like, whoa, I can do anything and everything. And then Shadow is Vegeta... And Tails is smart, and Rouge is sexy and smooth, right? <laughs> that's, that's about, I don't know, like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so, I mean, I, I get that, but at the same time, it does constrain certain things if you're doing an ongoing comic forever. Because if every... If all of the main characters are, are weirdly static, it gets, it gets kind of funny. Um... And I also get it because it's like, I guess the games are where things can change. Um, you know, like later, oh, Sonic Frontiers has come out. So maybe like when the comic eventually uh, reflects Frontiers, then they can do things um, differently. But at this point, they're still very constrained to, I, I guess, what what you would call the mandates, even though that is a fuzzy term when it comes to Sonic the Hedgehog. And not as cut and dry as everyone, as some people try to make it out to be. Loose mandates, I guess. Yeah, like like a like a loose meat sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. So like, based on <laughs> based on Ian's uh, comments, it seems that issue six, like during Sonic and Shadow's fight, there was supposed to be like an actual back and forth where. Where Sonic, where, because you you have those moments where like oh like so, so, it's like oh a- a- Eggman helped save the day with the arc. I mean, yeah, that, that was kind of his fault, but still. And then he's like, <laughs> and then he's like, oh yeah, the, a- Eggman helped fight off against the Black Arms. It's like if it wasn't for him, we would have been screwed. And it's like, I mean, not not really, but it's like it's, he he still technically did something good in that situation. So right, depending on the timeline. Right. I mean, at, at the end of the day, I, I I don't know what Eggman did at all to to help. I mean, Shadow's pretty much on his own. <laughs> the black arms are. I mean, attacking. do we really know what anybody besides Shadow did for an extended period of time? Uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like the canon version of Shadow. Uh, it's basically just Egg, <laughs> Eggman. Eggman and his Eggbots fought the black arms like in the background while Shadow was doing it. Like I think I feel like that was pretty much the in the canon in the canon version of Shadow the Hedgehog that that's in Ian Flynn's mind. That's pretty much all Eggman did. Like none of their like none of the whole oh like Shadow come and help me actually fuck you that happened in the game <laughs> probably happened. Right. Okay. I, yeah. Which then cuz cuz then that leads to the whole thing where like for Sonic point where Eggman where Shadow is like, "Oh, Egg doesn't care. Eggman must be destroyed." And Sonic's like, "Yeah, but you you were my villain too. You just you tried to destroy the world twice. And what happened there?" Yeah, you were a jerk. And he's like, uh, well, he doesn't say anything because he's not allowed to say anything, but he just had a one face of, oh shit, I guess you're right. <laughs> right. Which it's like, oh, if, which, which is because like one of my favorite version, one of my favorite portrayals of Shadow was in, was in pre-reboot Archie in uh, Treasure, uh, Treasure Team Tango, 
because that actually has like an interesting version of Shadow where he's going against him and Team uh, Dark are going against uh, Team Rose and getting the Soul Emeralds and Blaze had helped Shadow in the past. And so she's like, why are you going to get like, what the hell, man? Why are you going against me? And Shadow's like actually conflicted the entire time because he's like, He's like, oh, I feel like, oh, I'm, I'm, I have to do this thing, like for, I, I work for Gun, I have to do this thing for Gun, so it's like a no hard feeling sort of way. But the entire time, he's like actually feeling guilty, and he's like, oh, like I, I don't want to actually do this, but I feel like I'm forced to. And then in the end, he finally decides, oh no, yeah, we, we I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go against this and do what I think is right. And it's like, oh, actually, like actual in character, uh complexities for shadow and then it also has like funny moments of him being all like oh i've got my gun bike and be like oh like like why do you even need a bike like you're faster than <laughs> and he's like i like that bike it's like yeah the, that that's a good version of shadow you can have him be brooding and kind of a jerk in some ways but like he actually ultimately still cares like for like in in the points that matter so it's like oh yeah and he can be funny too so it's like yeah like it pre that that kind of like I think that was like yeah the last time in a in a comic book I think Shadow was like written like generally really well because then he didn't really he didn't show up again until Worlds Collide where he was just the the stock like jerk again and then from that point yeah he was just like the regular jerk occasionally you get kind of like oh like you basically yeah he's the Vegeta like he'll do some cool things occasionally but you won't really get a lot of good depth uh out of him and his character interactions i agree <laughs> although i do think prime prime fi- uh, sonic prime fixed this problem by having sonic be the idiot by having sonic be the idiot now shadow like when shadow acts as a jerk i'm like you know what actually i'm on Shadow's side now like that that's how you do that that, that, that that's how you make shadow being a jerk work is you make sonic yeah. worse speaking of sonic prime i think Maybe it was the colors, but while I was reading through the issues again, the fight between Sonic and Shadow and this really reminded me of the fight in Prime. Yeah, like yeah, when I saw it too, I'm like, I, I'm, I pretty, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they took inspiration from yeah. uh, Yardley scripting. Uh, the sunset skies, the green, well, not hills in this case, but right, forestry. Well, I guess uh, we know that Ian Flynn did uh, consult a little bit, although. At the end of the day, Prime is its own thing. It's, it's not. But yeah. but I'm sure that they were pulling from all sorts of things. And I an IDW would be fair game. Uh, yeah. un- unlike something yeah. in Archie where it's like, well, who knows who actually owns this moment? But but in IDW, it's like, yeah, Sega, Sega, they have it all locked up. Uh, they, they don't they don't want to stumble again, which makes sense. Well, I, I did like the little, like, speaking of, like, taking moments from other things, I did notice a lot of little um, callbacks and references, not just, like, in lines, but in visuals, too. I said, oh, that that shot of Metal Sonic looks a lot like the OVA. Or, uh, oh, mm-hmm. that, I'm thinking of another picture of Metal Sonic that looks like the OVA. Oh, no, Metal Sonic, ah. <laughs> just a lot of Metal Sonic. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we, we, yeah, we can jump into. We, yeah, we can jump. Well, and then Rouge is Rouge again. It's like Rouge is yeah. pretty constant in everything. It's like it's hard to kind of uh, mess with her. Yeah. Yeah. Like she just likes to watch and be amused. <laughs> and I guess she's not worried about capitalism because uh, she'll just. <laughs> she has she has a more uh, central arc later down the road, so we can so we can talk about more Rouge focused stuff later. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, yeah, then, yeah, Metal, so, so yeah, the big, uh, first, first off, when the issues were coming out, who did you think, uh, the mystery villain, did you think, did you think it was Metal Sonic, or did you think it was going to be somebody else? Because I didn't think Metal Sonic, like, even though it seems very obvious, I wasn't thinking Metal Sonic. I, see, when I'm, when I'm consuming a story, sometimes I just like to sit back and let the story ride, man. Weird. <laughs> um, so I didn't really put a whole lot of thought into it. I was just kind of going along with it. But once it was Metal Sonic, I realized, oh, yeah, they've, they've done this before. I should have probably expected that. I was honestly happy accepting just the fact that there are two Eggmen. <laughs> right. I mean, they could have. That it was a robo egg. Yeah. yeah, or a robot. Yeah. I like the 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 very first like right at the beginning I I was thinking infinite 
because I'm like that made, that makes the most sense. But then I think like I think like a month or two later, <laughs> Ian came out saying no, Infinite's not going to be in the book. So then that kind of put a caution in it. But for a for a, like a, a month or two, like I I was like confident being like oh maybe it could be Infinite. Oh we're gonna get we're gonna get good Infinite. And then it's like no, mm, weak. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm glad it wasn't Infinite. I don't like if they ever bring him back, I'd like to. Uh, there'd be some well there's been enough time now but at at when this comic started there hadn't been a whole lot of time and it's like let's 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 put infinite on the shelf and come up with something really good to ever pull him back out i i didn't know i guess i didn't really have any theories as to who the mystery villain was aside from well uh, eggman question mark although looking back is it, like i kind of wonder if it would have been um, because in issue seven, we, okay, so the end of issue six, we see other Eggman and it goes, what, Wh- who's this? And then in issue seven, it's very quickly, uh, resolved. But I, I do wonder if, if maybe, would, would it have been interesting if maybe during, at some point during the first four issues, Sonic runs into Neo Metal as Eggman and it's like, oh, look, that's Eggman. And then like the chaotix show up and are like we found Eggman and Sonic's like oh yeah I did too and they're like did you and then like the the mystery of Mr. Tinker sort of shows up and is like wait is is that the real Eggman uh I mean the the comic issue five sort of has okay like the the first frame when uh what's his face what what is his name uh the the head of the village he's a goat I don't remember he has a name yeah. oh, goat yes. man yeah Mr. The elder, goat yeah. Man. the elder right um when when they show Eggman, he does have like those little, um, you know, the Phantom uh, Ruby, the Phantom yeah. Ruby bits around his head, and it's like, huh, you only really see that if a Phantom Ruby thing happens. So, I did wonder if like, oh, is Mister Tinker the fake Eggman, and then the Eggman we see at the end of issue six is the real Eggman, and somehow this fake nice one was made. And maybe it is, like, something that Eggman secretly wants to be. It's not the first time they would have played with the idea of, oh, hey, um, you know, Eggman has different sides to himself, like the Sonic X comic with El Gran Gordo, or, you know, like, oh, he wants to be loved, and he could! Like, as Mr. Wrestler, like, he has all these fans, but he just can't give up the actual, like, Eggman persona, the evil genius. So it was like, oh, could, could there be something here? Is there two Eggman because one was made? out of his head, but instead it's like, oh, it's just Neo Metal Sonic. And it's like, oh, okay, I get it. Uh, you know, it's fine. You're, you're trying to explain, like, why Metal wasn't really in Forces. It's sort of a, you know, a sort of a sequel to the concepts of Sonic Heroes. Um, but it just felt very quickly resolved to me. I I do like uh, Issue 7, like, the, the action sequences, Sonic fighting Neo Metal. I, there, there is, like, a little nitpick, which might just be me, um, I know Neo Metal has his speech bubbles in blue, but man, there's a part of me that kind of wishes it was it was a box because he's a robot and he talks like a robot. And mm. <laughs> but that that's just me. I can't get mad that they didn't put it in a box. I'm like, oh, but they could have put it in a box. But yeah, but but, but yeah, he's living organic liquid metal. He can't he, be contained in a box. Yeah. Um. I mean, I guess if we really want to dig into it, I don't know why Eggman would give Neo Metal Sonic the ability to absorb things again. Uh, it didn't end well the last time. No. It ended poorly. Well, well, no, well, no, he's, well, well, he's, well he, you see, he he added he added the uh, he added the, uh, the the loyal the loyal he gave him the loyalty trip so he can't betray right. him again. Right, but I mean, I'm sure Eggman <laughs> didn't design Metal Sonic to be unloyal in the first place Eggman is bad at making AI that trusts him <laughs> like this has been established the you know E100 series most of them just seem to uh, get mad well you know E102 rebels against him E123 rebels against him Metal Sonic has um, he doesn't know how to control any giant monsters he finds um, it it just it seems very convenient that he finally figured it out with Metal I guess but, but <laughs> no, he's really loyal this time. He's really loyal this time. I mean, I, I... 
although honestly that that's kind of like my biggest disappointment because like i do really like the like i, I do like i, I mean I, I mean everybody loves metal so like metal sonic is like oh everyone loves like him and like mm-hmm. i feel like it's like the, the neo metal design i think was great and so like seeing that seeing that from heroes in like comic book form done but done excellently by adam bryce thomas is like oh it's like it's it's great to see like he does such a like a go and especially like the the coloring that he does on the shading of mm-hmm. his like making it really look metallic i think is like oh that's it's excellent my my kid what, what i always loved about metals like i liked the uh the independence of metal sonic like every time metal sonic was done and like when he portrayed in heroes or whenever he's kind of shown doing stuff on his own in other media or other games or and anytime he shows up i always like that version and that version of metal sonic that's like basically the robot that believes him to be the real Sonic and will do whatever he can in order to prove so mm-hmm. is what I really love about the character versus when he's just another robot that Eggman sends out to fight Sonic. So and what I you're feel like, saying... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, oh, Yeah, and I feel like this version, like the fact that he's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm in charge of the Eggman Empire so I can rule for Eggman until he comes back and then I'm going to give it back to him. And I'm like... Uh, like I, I, I kind of don't really care about that as much. It's like, yeah, I like, I like when metal is his own, like his own character and his own being. It's like, oh, like I, it's kind of like a uh, uh, base in Mega Man where he's like, I don't really give a shit about Wily, but I just kind of stick behind Wily so that I can cause some shit. It's like, yeah. I like the idea that Metal Sonic is just around Eggman because, oh, it's the best way to get to, uh, it's like, so- it's the best way to get to Sonic, and that he'll turn on him if he believes like that's the that's the best way to surpass sonic and yeah so it's like just 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 that but it's like other other than that yeah the the action sequence is great and seeing seeing neo use like these like oh his copy abilities to uh overpower uh overpower sonic is like oh it's a good it's a good setup for then how it gets played into in the next arc right yeah, all I'm hearing is that you're telling me Sonic the Hedgehog for Episode Metal is the best written Sonic game. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> yeah, man. Maybe maybe it would have been interesting. Like, okay, so if Metal Sonic is always like I'm the real Sonic, if that's like one of his driving forces over the years, if mm-hmm. if Neo Metal's first new absorption like uh, is Eggman, right? Instead of him going, I'll just do this until Eggman comes back. It could have been like I'm the real Sonic. And I'm also the real Eggman. Like that mm, also could have ooh. been something to play with. That's interesting. Because then you don't even have to worry about, oh, is Eggman going to come back? Um, I mean, you could, but it, it's like, oh, it's just like metal. Whenever he's Neo Metal Sonic, he's crazy. Like that's crazy version. You don't want to deal with crazy version. Eggman, please don't make him crazy. Oh, God, you did it again. <laughs> um yeah, I don't know. It, like, that could have been an interesting twist. Um, I feel like that's something that would be super fun, but I feel like Sega would super shoot that down for some reason. Uh, I know. I don't know why. I just have that feeling. Uh, yeah, and then, and, then, and also that that Neo is is Neo is perfectly capable of full communication and speech, and then Metal is like barely able to say a, a line. Yeah. And so it's like, oh yeah, that that, that kind of there there is yeah not 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 to jump forward a bit but there is a there is one particular metal sonic story far down in the future that i really love and i can't wait to talk about but it's like yeah they they do do something really that i think really great with metal uh later on that like i feel like really captures what i want and what i love about the character and also that we do kind of get the idea of oh a better Eggman and a better Sonic later on in the comic with the different characters. So maybe yeah, m- maybe Sky does have a point that they wouldn't let them do with Metal. So Ian ended up creating new characters to kind of take on that idea, because yeah, the, that that plot line does end up getting kind of redone in a way with uh, with new characters. Yeah, sorta. Yeah. Um... Yeah. And. And speaking of new characters, then we got Whisper. Yes. Who is, I think, yeah, I, th- I think my, of of all the even the ones even the ones that have come out since, I mm-hmm. think Whisper is my favorite original uh, IDW character. Whisper rules. Right. Yeah. He's so fucking <laughs> cute. Yeah, I mean, I guess because Whisper, I, I think Whisper's introduction is probably stronger than Tangles from issue four yeah, to definitely. be honest like yeah. i i like the way that they seed her in and then like she's sort of teased and they finally introduce her but even when they do 
she's still a mystery so it's like oh you know they're they're clearly setting things up but and mm-hmm. and there's a lot that you can explore um i guess with tangle we probably we kind of just like we know her deal from the get go you know she she's very you know she's she's outgoing she can do things with her tail she does the attack she's super excited by everyone and everything like we you, you know tangle whisper there, there's definitely more going on there, and it, and it's nice to yeah. to kind of get get anything like that, especially if if Sega is being very controlling of the IP and the characters that were created for the games, and so to to get a character that that definitely feels like she can belong in that world, but there's more going on with her, like it it, it it's nice, it's nice to have that there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just a thing of like yeah, like not only do I uh, yeah, not only do I just love I love I she she has she has a great design. I I just love like yeah, they the those they they have that 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 anxious like character of being like oh like they're very shy but also like there's somebody who's very shy they don't really speak but then also can kick your ass very well like the that are very <laughs> they're very skilled yeah they're basically she's a fan yeah well I mean she is literally she's literally a sniper like that, that that's that's her <laughs> whole like design for fun that they 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 work the they work the wisps in well being like oh she's got kind of like she got like a little, like group of wisp friends that she used to power her wisp in. And then yeah, then you get uh you get the little tease of like oh like it's not just oh here here she is she's introduced but then you get the little hint of oh there's something else going on with her that it's like oh she seems very disturbed that and something must have gone on and like it makes you intrigued of oh it's not just that you like her now it's like oh I want to see what else is going on. she's got more under the surface than like Tangle is what you see is what you get she's like mm. oh there's 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 layers to this and it's like yeah that that also helps make her be, uh as such as such a more intriguing character to the point that yeah that alongside Tangle Sega not only gave her not only gave them both a plush but also put them both in a video game and it's like hey and then also uh I forget of Whisper but yeah Tangle is referenced in Frontiers so it's like now they've been like fully canonized in the Sonic mythos Right, yeah. I yeah. agree. I Tangle agree is... somewhat with Whisper, the, but I see it a little bit differently in the sense that I feel like Whisper, honestly, I think was brought in to make a character that like autistic kids reading the book could relate to because she's very quiet, doesn't talk much, has her own circle of friends with the Wisps, and speaking from experience, reading from reading um, a lot of what she said, I said, "Oh, that reminds me of me when I was little." So I wonder if that was intentional. I, I can definitely, yeah, I, I can definitely see that, especially yeah, knowing, know, know, knowing how, like knowing how self-aware uh, Ian is with his writing. I can definitely see, and also since uh, she was also designed, she was designed by Evan Stanley too. I can definitely see that that was very. I, 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 I can definitely believe that it was very much a a intentional design when when creating the character and being like oh yeah we can do it this we can kind of code her in this way and yeah, that's awesome. make it like yeah and 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 they're both they're both uh good enough writers that they can pull it off they they, they they're able to pull it off this well and not make it feel tacky or off like yeah oh which yeah is, yeah like peeling back the curtain on me a little bit growing up i almost never talked to anybody like i had my parents i had a couple of friends sometimes teachers that's it like i remember i would raise my hand in class i would get called on and i would whisper the answer in the ear of the kid next to me and they would say it for me so like looking at whisper i said oh my god that's (laughs) oh that's a little relatable there wow yeah no i've definitely had that same similar uh the same similar experiences here and there so it's like i definitely get that uh and then we got and then, yeah, and then, and then silver here, and we we get a little uh, we get a little uh, what do you call it? Uh, hints about uh, well, then I wouldn't really say hints, but like we we, we like for foreshadowing, but also I mean like we get more of like a reveal, of like oh like oh because the whole thing of like oh silver silver is like we the, there was there was that uh, the prequel comic where it's like oh why is silver in forces and mm-hmm. it's like we get a little thing of like oh yeah because in in his future, uh, right. in like the forces future, the Eggman empire ruled overall. So it's like, Oh, I came back in time to stop, uh, to help like stop Eggman. Cause like, Oh, in my future, he's like, 
he's uh yeah he, he's he's evil dictator i've taken over the world and everything and then yeah now we have the thing of like oh he go i i do love the the this idea that yeah that's sh- that silver just keeps going back to the, the he just keep like it, it just keeps going back to the future the future just is always shitty but it's just there's something different so it's just like at this point like shit like the, the the timeline that silver came from is like completely gone and just has been changed like five times at this point right right i mean i guess i wonder like what version of silver this would be i mean it's not 06 silver 06 silver doesn't exist um there's <laughs> there's a silver in rivals who is just like i've come back in time to uh, i i need to fight eggman negative and does so <laughs> <laughs> and uh and then you get him in the ds version of colors where he's like oh yeah my future is full of blue skies and sonic's like yeah that sounds like now and he's like yeah uh they're bluer or whatever like but it's clear that silver's future is happy and nice at that point so mm-hmm. if he goes back to the future is that when things are like oh something happened and it makes or or is it just i mean i guess i shouldn't think about it too much because it's time travel and stuff but then i also wonder if the eggman empire ruled silver's future like wouldn't eggman be dead by that point so who's in charge yeah that's a good question <laughs> well, maybe it's his lineage oh yeah i guess it could be eggman negative he's like i am in charge of, of the current <laughs> yes, eggman I empire. Am his descendant but I... also i'm him from a parallel world yeah <laughs> they're yeah. clones I, 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 my, my, it's either i mean honestly uh, let's say clones but also at mm-hmm. this point i'm like i, I feel like i, I mean because even spe- considering that uh maybe maybe they maybe they don't do it because penders already did it but i'm like eggman uploading his consciousness into a robot is like the most eggman thing you would do in order to survive after death so it's like mm-hmm. it's like yeah may, maybe maybe Maybe, maybe other, maybe they wanted to do it, but they're like, oh, no, P already did it. We can't do it anymore. Ugh. So, like, yeah, now we have to be like, he has a kid or he has alternate dimension people. Right. Although I guess we never, we, we still to this day don't know why, why Silver time travels because it's, it's just a thing he does. But technically, if we go back to Sonic 06, he doesn't have the power to time travel. He travels through time because of Mephilus and then figures out he can time travel by doing chaos control with somebody else, but none of that happens. And then, but I guess then he does follow Eggman negative back in time during both rivals games. So, but I don't know if that means he knows how to time travel or if Eggman negative built a time machine and he's like, I'm just going to follow you. And now he just does it. (laughs) It it is yeah. it is one of the great mysteries, which I guess technically there's supposed to be a reason, but we don't know what the answer is. I I don't remember, but I think because in the future, like in in the future, there's an issue where there is an issue where Silver does return back to the future, mm-hmm. and I don't remember at the moment wh- if if they actually show how he does it or if he just z- like teleports and is back in the future again so i'll i'll we'll we'll, we'll we'll find out once we get there but i do oh. know in in our in archie he, t- he time travels with time stones so right which makes sense i have a reason in there yeah but uh I, I you know maybe they're not allowed to touch time stones right now who knows so but that that would be like yeah. the answer if he had one on his possession just like shadow i guess always needs a chaos emerald to chaos control which um he, d- he does a little chaos controlling in this arc, right? In issue six, he does a little bit. But uh, I was going to leave that yeah, for... Even though, yeah, no, e- even though oh, he yeah. shouldn't... Yeah, even though he shouldn't have a chaos emerald at the moment. Uh-huh. He always does. Uh, except when he doesn't. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, and then... Uh, oh, oh, uh, and, and, and Silver is the first character in a Sonic comic to cuss. I'm sure. <sighs> I... I, I m- 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 the mildest of milds it's the mildest but it, i think it's funny that it's like uh that it's it's just it's just because yeah, because normally the, the comics are just oh they're they're pretty tame and like usual stuff and you just see it, it is it, crap is tame but it's just crap is just an out of nowhere thing of just that, being that, like oh I'll give you that it's it, it's funny because you're not you're not expecting to see someone say crap and us. I mean, like obviously like with, with, with the dams and everything in shadow, but it's like yeah. oh, like we we move we move past that, you're so it's going fine. Straight so it's, to hell. 
<laughs> so just the just the random crap is just like, huh? It's it, just may, maybe they maybe yeah, it did come out of yeah. nowhere. It does come out of nowhere. I I am not a fan of the crap. Um, it because <laughs> I hate this crap. I hate <laughs> yeah, man. This crap is crap. I don't uh, I don't know. It just it feels weird for any Sonic character to to say that because it it could have been like oh no, it could have been oh heck. I'm okay with heck. <laughs> just, um, oh really? I, yeah, I, I, I guess because I feel like I know, uh, like to me, the word crap is like the super obvious. I wish I could say something more extreme, but I can't. And something like heck doesn't to me. Like heck is heck, but crap wants to be shit. <laughs> you know. So it's like, uh, and and I wouldn't want him to say oh shit because it's silver and it's a kid, <laughs> it's a comic for kids. Like you're not gonna have him say shit. But it just it just. I don't know. It just feels out of place to me. Like Ian Flynn was just playing a lot of Uncharted when he wrote this. I <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah. It just it just feels a little out of place. Um, and I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what. Like I said, like an oh no or an oh heck, but it. it oh yeah. heck! Oh heck! Oh heck! Like I'm a fan of hack. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's not. It is. It's not like a real swear. It's not something super offensive. It just feels out of place to me. That that's what it is. It's not. It's not like I'm offended. I just. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'm. 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 I'm neutral to it. Like I. I'm neutral to it. Is uh, I think it's funny, but it's like I'm not like oh like th- th- this was this was a good idea. Like I, if they if they took it out, I wouldn't be like I wouldn't say it was bad. Like, I, I probably would say like oh yeah, it, it would fit better in tone. I just think it's it makes me laugh, so I'm like I, I can forgive I can forgive something dumb if it's like a goofy like that like yeah silver saying crap, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that... And, and then you oh yeah and then you end it with oh like the lead into the next arc which is Metal Sonic has taken over Angel Island. Oops. Oh no. <laughs> Shnoops Knuckles. It's a big oh no. It's like Knuckles. Maybe you should have been paying a little bit more attention because what's been going on? Maybe you should have hit it better. Yeah, I. The one, is... the one, yeah, the 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 one time Knuck, the Knuckle spends all the time on Angel Island, but he's like, okay, this one time I'll get off Angel Island and be like, oh, it's fine. Nobody else is gonna touch it. Yeah, and they're, they're the talking one, about the how one he time. They're talking about how he hid the Master Emerald, but when you see Metal Sonic looking over the horizon, you see this big green glow just right smack dab there. He hid it very well, very well. <laughs> <laughs> he took a bunch of leaves and covered it. No one will ever know. <laughs> All right, time to lead the resistance. I have this great idea, Operation <laughs> he, Big Wave. He didn't. No, he, he didn't. The 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 flickies that he had guarded did a terrible job. Oh right. I guess I guess that's why Sonic Runners isn't considered canon anymore. <laughs> oh no, the, the, it was the idea. But Satan. <laughs> okay, that part's canon. That part's always canon. Um, I. <laughs> Oh, uh, so, yeah, I, th- I think is there. Yeah, is there anything else for any of these four issues um, uh, that you have immediate thoughts about? Immediate thoughts, um, right? Because we talked about the crap bit. I think the the other thing that that I was like, uh, I don't know how I feel about this because it feels a little forced to me. Okay, um, when Ian puts in references that are like quotes or song lyrics or things. Sometimes they can be done really. I think you're about to say. I know what he. I literally know what he's about to say. Sometimes they can be done really well, like they're they feel natural in the way that they're presented. But to me, (laughs) the one that happens in issue seven, where Neo Metal Sonic (laughs) is holding Sonic by the neck and is like, "Oh yes, I have your bio data. I have my original plan. I will sift through this world's ashes to find him, i.e., Eggman, if I have to. Tell me or fall." And then Sonic says, I never fear the fall. And I was just like... (laughs) (laughs) Shouts out to Zebrahead. Right. (laughs) And it just, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel natural. It feels like... uh, That one just feels forced to me. I'm sorry. (laughs) And so it made me groan a little (laughs) the first time I read it. Same. Oh, come on. I also liked the uh, sitcom ending of issue five 
where Mr. Tinker is like, oh, I guess I have to build a lot more tables. Ha 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 That one made me smile. Although, I, 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 at least that that one works in context, because, I mean, Mr. Tinker is supposed to be very goofy and over-exaggerated, so him, yeah. him doing that is like, that yeah, works. That, yeah, that, that one is an instance of it working. By the way, random question, what voices of the characters do you guys read these in? Uh... I read, I, I, I read, I pretty much like the modern cast. Like I read, I read Sonic and Roger. Uh, yeah, I pretty, I, I pretty much every, I mean, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Every, their, their modern voices is what I read everybody in. Like, makes sense. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, Tails is, uh, oh, oh Colleen, Colleen oh. O'Long voice. Oh. Uh, Knuckles is Kirk Thornton. No, Shadow is Kirk Thornton. Uh, Although, although I I, I do kind of fe- I, I do I do sometimes decide to just lean into thinking about Jason Griffith just because I like that more. But it's like I do, I generally read it as Kirk Thornton, Rouge mm. her vo- her modern voice, uh, Knuckle. Well, I mean, all a lot of them a lot, a lot of the Knuckles kind of like sound the sound the same anyway, even yeah. when they're different guys. So it's like yeah, again, it's really just like Sonic. It's like it's do you have a specific Sonic you want to think of, or you just stick with modern? I'm kind of like a well with Sonic I read it in Roger. The rest is kind of a mishmash. Like I read Shadow as Jason Griffith, uh, mm. Eggman as you know our boy Mikey. Um, <laughs> it's funny for Vector. The last thing with Vector that I watched was the Snap Cube Shadow dub. So I've been reading it in uh, that Vector's voice. So that was fun. <laughs> That's thinking, funny. telling Shadow to be a right click hero. Uh, yeah, although I, I I do think of mainly because modern the modern chaotix haven't had a lot to speak, so I do yeah. think of the chaotix as their four kids one mainly. <laughs> yeah, I guess that that's the most chaotix uh, chaotix talks the most the most chaotical talking. Other like than Vec, because Ve- Vec- Vector well, I mean, Vector has his es- is, has his episode of Boom, so he has a bit more. Tr- true. Uh, that's true. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I do I, love Kirk, and I do love Kirk Thor, and I do love uh, Keith Silverstein. So it's like mm-hmm. oh, I, I like I like the hit that VA. So he does kind of get some points there. Um, yeah, I I read it all in sort of a mix as well. Yeah, I think it, it sometimes it's influenced by like the last version of the characters that I've heard. Like um, recently watched an episode of of Four Kids Sonic X. So reading Rouge here, I'm just oh. hearing that version of Rouge. Um, Did you hear blaring saxophones? In your <laughs> you read it? Oh, I always do. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you know, and then Sonic, it can be sort of a a mix between Roger and then sometimes it slips into Jason. Um, Neo Metal Sonic, there's only been one voice, so like that's pretty much it. That's true. Know? So that's you just how hear I Ryan. <laughs> I just hear Ryan, like for him, which makes sense. And then, um, yeah, there is only one Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, <that> might <laughs> Imagine I, trying to read a comic with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think for Knuckles, uh, maybe I sometimes just default to uh, the original Avenger. Uh, Avenger? Ad- Adventure. Dun, dun. You know, oh, it was... Uh, 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 Michael Mc, 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 McGahorn, I think his name was. Yeah. I don't, uh. I don't even know the name of a play that I did, much less somebody else. <laughs> right. <laughs> You don't need to know names. I just know yeah. feelings. Uh, but it, yeah, it, it it is a mix generally of, of modern and then sometimes whatever I had recently heard from the past and whatever whatever clicks. Yeah. yeah. Even though I do a Tales voice, I never read Tales <laughs> in my head as that when it's a comic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have Tales going, come on, all right, instead of a man genius. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read it out loud like that, but I generally don't hear tales in my head like that because that's uh... I, I hear, I hear different Rogers now just because he's been doing it for so long. Mm-hmm. Like I kept going back and forth from like the deeper frontiers voice and oh colors aliens baldy big nose hair like the quippier Pizza Hut guy. Yeah, when I when I hear when I hear the Roger I hear when reading is more boom because I feel like boom is kind of like that middle. That like kind of like the middle thing that kind of mm. like obviously it's more goofy than this Sonic, but I feel like the tone kind of fits this Sonic more compared yeah. to so yeah say the the to, to say uh, very mellow Roger from Frontiers right I get mellow Frontiers like that voice might work later in 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 the future but here in the future Ooh, something in the fu- for you to look forward to listener yes <laughs> all right is there any other uh, th- 
uh, thoughts you got for this before I get into my the rest of my trivia? The rest of your trivia, right? Uh, no, I mean if if we're still doing, I guess the the format we did before, which is like, oh, what was your favorite moment? Then I I don't think I have yeah, anything all else. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm ready to hear some trivia. Let's hear some trivia. So the idea to use Neo Metal Sonic as the initial main antagonist was Ian's uh, first pitch that was pre- that was presented to the creative crew that got him the job to uh, write the, the comic. He believed that it was the best approach to start off with a villain that wasn't Eggman, that was someone that was familiar to Sonic fans, but not someone that readers would necessarily expect, thus choosing Metal, especially since he could transform into Eggman for, a, for that fake-out ending that we mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, then for, for some Whisper backstory, Wisp, like I mentioned, he, uh, she was uh, conceptualized by Ian Flynn with her actual character design by Evan Stanley. Uh, she took inspiration from Sniper Wolf from Metal Gear, Major from Ghost in the Shell, and Kopaka from Bionicle. With her, oh. with the... With her physic, with the actual physical design of her being mostly derived from the wolf avatar from Sonic Forces, most specifically a version of the wolf that like that has the closed eyes and has like uh like the 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 uh the uh the skull the skull like face mask that you can wear. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. so like the, that, w- that was specifically where the wisp, the design of Whisper came from. Uh, her early designs also uh, had her with blue hair and fur, and without her uh, kabuki mask. And speaking of that, uh, Evan chose that since she felt that not only did it fit her personality, but it was also one of her favorite costume pieces from Forces that you could put in the character. And then, <laughs> I- and then Ian uh, took that and decided to make that her sniper scope. Mm. Oh, not the gamer hat. So she... the, which, 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 may I imagine Whisper, if, if the gamer hat was Evan's favorite thing, then Whisper would have had the gamer hat. And I don't know if we would have loved her as much. Or maybe, well, we would, maybe we would have loved her more. Right, and then Who like knows? the bodysuit with the giant picture of Sonic's face on it. <laughs> She's like, I want that. Oh. oh, man. So many boots, so many shoes. <laughs> If only, yeah, if, if only her favorite design, if, yeah, the, if only Whisper had the dead eye, the big dead eyes. <laughs> and the goofy face. Well, the, just, they, yeah, and I'm just imagining, yeah, all the, all the other version of Whisper with, like, with the wolf with the different faces. And it's like, what could have been? <laughs> they need to introduce uh, a character with the dead eyes then. It's, <laughs> it's needed at this point. Uh, we need Blood Sonic. <laughs> 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 It's me. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's see. What? Uh, Jamal Peppers was supposed to uh, do the art for issue five, but had to back out due to being too busy with another project. So Tracy came in, which does kind of make when you make sense, considering that Jamal Peppers did uh, the cover. He did one of the covers for issue five. And uh, for the past couple issues, uh, the artist also did at least one cover. So that does match up. I tried doing into research. I wasn't able to figure out what the project he was working on at the same time was, but I believe it was either something TMNT or Star Wars Adventures related because he was working on both and they're both IDW and came out around the same time. So mm. probably one of those. Uh, let me see. Uh, Sonic and Shadows posing on the cover A of issue six was features a reference to a scene between Sonic and Metal Sonic from Worlds Collide, which John Gray considers as one of his favorite panels from that event, which that panel itself was also a reference to uh, a, a, a moment from the Sonic OVA. So it's just a reference on top of a reference. And then also uh, Tracy Yardley's cover B for issue six was directly based off a of face off. Uh, you also have uh, the silver foil cover, the the silver foil cover on issue seven, which also includes the silver logo of Sonic, was meant to foreshadow the reveal of Metal Sonic before you even opened up the before you even open up the comic, which I do think that is a really cool like little touch. I'd be like, yeah, so issue seven is like the one the one Sonic issue that has like a foil like cover that like that you normally see in like recent like DC comics mainly uh, do those foil covers. And then you have like the actual the Sonic logo Mm -hmm. having the metal sheen to it. I think it's a really cool like look to it that they've never done in any other issue. Nice. It's 90s. It's (laughs) 90s. Yeah, yeah, it is very 90s. Just like, yeah, just like the variant covers. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, and then as a, as a little extra side thing, uh, E one hundred seven Theta, which is the robot that uh, Sonic uh, Silver and Whisper fight in issue eight, 
He, uh, they were supposed to originally be in the Archie arc, uh, The Chase, but was removed due to potential repercussions regarding Penders because he used him in a previous arc. Mm. So it's like, so we do see one thing of like, oh, like I was just looking into it being like, oh, here's a character that was supposed to be in an Archie book that wasn't because of Penders, but was, was now in a future thing. So that's, I mean, even though it's a role, it's not actually a character, but it was a funny thing to mention because right. lol Penders. Uh, does it, is there any indication in the book that it is E107? Because I don't remember seeing a number when I looked. That's what I wasn't, I wasn't too sure when I was like, like when I was going through. Uh, but I do know, I, at least from like what, like the research that I was doing and also looking on the, the research slash looking on the Sonic Wiki all showed me that that was apparently E107 Theta. So huh. I'd be like, okay, based on the information that I see present, I have to believe so. It's just some deep lore for the viewer to look up. Also, because it like I mean, it, it looks I mean, it's 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 the I, I think it's it's well, but it's it's the one with the Dreamcast. It's the one with the Dreamcast models on it. So yeah, it's the upgrade that Zeta gets. Yeah. Right. So who's E one o six? Uh, could be someone in this very podcast. Uh oh. Uh, okay, now let's get to uh, the final the final little segment of our favorite blank. So, first of the four issues, what would you say is your favorite? Is your favorite? Uh, just to start, uh, my favorite. I- I'd probably say issue seven is my favorite, just because I think, yeah, uh, uh, the the rev- the the Metal Sonic. Even though it's like the type of Metal Sonic that I wish, uh, I wish there was like a more independent Metal Sonic. I still really like the reveal. Uh, Adam Bryce, Adam Tom- Adam Bryce Thomas's art is fantastic. The fight scene is really cool. It's like I think I think that is like just my the the one the one yeah the 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 one that I've uh, gone back to the most I think that yeah that one is my favorite. Uh, well before <laughs> I do, I just want to say. I don't fully understand how that one covers a reference to the face off poster, because the face off poster mm-hmm. is like a face right, and it's the face, and it's the face. And then the co- the covers the whole body, and there's like lines and colors and stuff. But face off is just kind of yeah, half Travolta and have it. It feels very tenuous. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I I I thought that was confusing at first, but then I look and I was like, well, Trace Tr- Tracy said it was based on face off, so yeah. I'm, I it, I guess. I'm doing, yeah, I mean, yeah. if he said it, I I don't know why he would lie. That would be a weird thing to lie about. I just. Yeah. It could have been way more intentional, I guess. Uh, more of an homage. Doesn't matter. Move on. Okay. Uh, favorite issue. Because, really, I, I think, even though I, I was, uh, may have uh, complained and said, oh, they could have done this and that or, instead or something. Ha ha. I, I think it's still, to me, issue seven is, is my favorite of these four. Uh, I like, I mean, it's just, once we get into the Sonic verse Neo Metal, like, that that's classic sonic fighting um you uh, i really you know i enjoy the fight sequence um there's echoes of what goes on with heroes i, I like the bit where sonic destroys all the cannons because it's like oh you have to do that in heroes and he does it here <laughs> and it allows him to escape it you know allows things to happen and it is interesting that they do try to explain hey why was metal sonic not actually in forces because it was really weird that you just fought a phantom version of Metal Sonic. Like, Metal Sonic exists. Why wouldn't he be in that game? Like, it's not like he was destroyed forever and ever. I don't understand. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I thought there was some neat stuff there. Um, I like it. I like 7. I would say issue 8 for me. I Ooh. like 7, but the little banter with uh, Sonic just giving Silver a hard time was really fun. Uh, mm-hmm. Whisper is based as hell. I like seeing an <laughs> E-series robot. And we're setting the stage for the next arc. Good stuff. Yeah. No, eight's good. Eight's good. I, I, yeah. Seven and eight um, are probably... I like them better than five and six. Yeah. You know, if we're putting it on a scale, we can make a tier list of every issue right now. We, Let's we've do seen, it. <laughs> we, <laughs> we've seen Sonic and Shadow fight over misunderstandings before. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's whatever. It's not... I wouldn't say it's played out yet, but it's not something we haven't seen before. Um, Mr. Tinker is really fun, but they don't go, uh, they don't do a whole lot with it, I don't think, personally. Uh, spoilers, they don't do a whole lot more with it after this. Um, yeah, so 7 and 8 for me are the, uh, 
the top tier. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know if I'm going to be ranking uh, all the, I'm not going to, I don't know if I'm going to be ranking every individual issue together, but I know I'm going to be <laughs> ranking like these vol, like these arcs, because since they're following up, like say, like if you're, if you're getting these by volumes and you're like, oh, you want to like look at each volume and be like, oh, like best to least or whatever. And uh, as of right now, the fate of Dr. Eggman is number one out of two. So it's like where 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 will where will that uh where will that uh end up like with the rest of the as rest of the volumes come out? Who knows? But we can find out later. We can find out as we're going through. Uh <laughs> then yeah, so then following up, uh what would you say is either your favorite line or moment uh from any of these four issues? Uh Skylar, you can go first this time. Um, for the wrong reasons. <laughs> I never fear the fall. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Um, I will say another one. It was, uh, the shot where, that I mentioned earlier, where Metal Sonic's explaining what happened after Heroes and Eggman's repairing him, and it looks very Sonic OVA-esque from the, uh, opening shot, where he's mm-hmm. sitting there, leaning forward, floating, arms down, sudden Eggman do his thing. I enjoyed that. That's subtle nostalgia that I appreciate. Yeah, they are. They are very good with their little like. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, their their little hint homages whenever they could sneak them in. Uh, yeah. David, would you say yours? Um, like uh, individual moment. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, the bit where uh, Shadow is uh rushing towards the chaotics, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you know, we're gonna make a wall," and then he just kind of uh, chaos controls yeah, through them. And, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I good. I like it. I think it's funny because it, it's like, oh yeah, the chaotics are gonna do something. There's gonna be they're gonna do a fight. And it's like, no, no, they're not. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amused by it. I like it. Uh, for I well first, uh, I need I need I need to scratch out. I never fear the fall. Unironically, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't get judged. So uh, I, if I you think like I'm... it unironically, it's okay. I'm just saying yeah, for we're... me. I I just I thought it was. Not the best reference, <laughs> use of reference. For yeah, for for the thing I'll I'll say uh, the the moment that I think the game got me the, the biggest laugh was yeah, in issue eight when Whisper mm-hmm. introduces her name and you get Silver's okay, but why? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. That it's is like good. Yeah, just like okay. and also just generally like S- Silver's uh the the characterization of Silver just being like a big doofus like whenever they can let Silver just be a big doofus I think is always great and just being all like just playing into him being like like he on like he he feel other than Charmy he feels like the most like a kid of all, even mm. more than even more than Tails he feels like the most like a kid and I th- I think it's just be yeah, a fun whenever they do like like in uh in Team Sonic Racing characterizes shit Silver very well in this in this way and then all and also I want to add in terms of uh like a uh, uh, the moment in SU7 when Neo Metal decks Sonic right in the chest is such a great uh, panel. Yes. So good, yeah. And then uh, now to go to favorite covers. Uh, first of the of the four main covers uh, for each of the issues, which of the four would you say is your favorite? Uh, I'm just gonna go quickly and say that the e- even though like they're, they're all they're all again they're all very good, but the easy one I just had to jump to was issue six, uh, with because the first of many amazing John Gray, uh, just spreads and it's like yeah John Gray just doing just f- filling the page with as much as he can and it just looks great. Sorry, I'm going through my digital trade paperback copy to look at the covers again. Right. <laughs> Um, well, while you do that, I, I think, like, I, I love John Gray's covers, I do. Um, I, I think uh, he, he makes some even better ones later. Um, f- for me, I don't know, there was something, I think just like the simplicity of the uh, issue 7 cover B with Sonic and Tails on the tornado, and you see Eggman, like, just... The well, one. Well, so, 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 yeah, we're talking about main cover. We can save the variant covers uh, well, that's, for the oh, next just, time. Uh, oh, of, of the four of the four A cover of, of the four of A of eight, the four A's. A's. Yes. Okay, of all of the four A's, yeah. then yeah, I'd have to go with John Gray. I'm sorry, I I, I slightly <laughs> misunderstood. Um, I yeah, you know, we'll go with A. We'll go with that one. We'll do the John Gray. Uh, 
I mean, I feel like Seven is sort of a contender, but at the same time, John Gray just beats it out there. Ah. And Skies, what'd you say? Okay, Seven. Oh, th- that tornado's carrying a fox and a hedgehog. No, that 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 that, one, that one's oh. the variant cover. Uh, the main right. one is the one where Sonic's the Sonic's running down the egg fleet, and you see it from the from the oh the, the one by Kieran. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's probably my favorite. Then I thought that was a variant cover because that was not in the same order as my uh, digital copy was showing me, and it was al- also not the uh, first one that popped up on my DuckDuckGo search. But yeah, the one by Kieran, I love that one. Yeah, the one, the one where you have like the alert, and it has like all the like it has the it has the Genesis uh, buttons on it, and then it also yeah. has the Dreamcast buttons. The dream, right, it's a good cover. Like it is sort of a yeah. Um, I, I think it looks it. it looks better as an actual like the physical item in your hand with the with the you know the foil logo and everything. It works better yeah, the, than just foil, seeing yeah. a scan yeah. or a picture. So it's like, uh, yeah. That's right. It's like a, it's a it is a toss up between six and seven. Ah, yeah. And then and then in terms of variant covers, uh, I'll jump in and say my, I think my favorite might by a hair might be seven uh, B. Yeah, which mm-hmm. is the one you mentioned, the Adam Bryce Thomas one, where it's Sonic and Tails uh, on the tornado. I, I think I think that one just looks really cool. Yeah, it's just it's a good kind of like like yeah setup for like the the issue. It's just a great uh, it's a great uh, art piece. Uh, right. Yeah, of course. Uh, and then uh, oh okay, yeah, for, for go, go through your two before I say my honorable mention uh, of all the variant covers. What would you say is your favorite? Oh man, I I love all of the Natalie Fordrain covers. Like I went out of my way to collect those specific covers when I was still collecting the comics. Like I love that art style, just the colors and the style. Just, mwah, brilliant. Um I can't really narrow it down to one. Um but also I do want to mention the Evan Stanley one for number 8 where uh Sonic's reflection is in uh Whisper's mask eye piece that one's pretty sweet <laughs> yeah no, i know i love i love that issue eight the variant cover of issue eight is like yeah it's it's whispers perspective of it's whispers perspective of the main issue eight cover i think i love i love whenever they do though that kind of oh, symmetry between them i didn't yeah, because that. yeah because the main issue eight cover is like is the target on sonic right. and silver and then the variant cover is the close oh, yeah. up on whisper and She's then getting ready to the shoot Sonic. them. <laughs> I, I didn't. Re- that's awesome. I didn't yeah. realize that. She's like, finally, I can end this franchise with a <laughs> yeah. single shot. And, and yeah, the, uh, the, yeah, the 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 Nathalie Ford Ford Danny ones are excellent as usual. I it, I just couldn't decide which of the four I like the most, which is what leads yeah, me same. more toward picking uh seven B because it's like, Oh, I, right. I know I like that one. I'll pick with that. I know there's going to be, I, I, I think I picked off. I think I picked an athlete, uh, variant cover last episode and there's pro- definitely going to be more to pick in the future. So I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll go for that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, her, her covers are always good. I, I guess the only thing about this crop, it's like, uh, like, uh, five and six, they're just, here's, here's Sonic and Eggman, but it doesn't really reflect anything that goes on in the actual story it's just i feel like they nice rarely do yeah i mean i guess you could maybe say seven is symbolic because like there's this figure over or what I, I don't know and then eight it at least it is sonic and silver even if they're not actually yeah. where i mean maybe they were running outside before like that's outside the bay who knows i mean it, it you, you could fudge it five and six though it's just strictly Here's here's Sonic and Eggman, and but this is nothing about the story especially because especially because the uh, issue the N- Nathalie's issue six uh, variant cover is what they used for the volume two cover, the one of like the big shadow of Eggman looming over Sonic and Tails. Yeah, uh, I, that was uh, issue seven. The the shat. Yeah, issue oh, yeah, seven yeah. is the one with the shadow right, and yeah. the hand like reaching towards them. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I mean, I guess you know that is symbolic because like there is the shadow of Eggman hovering over everything still, even though they found Mister Tinker. It's like, well, there is the shadow of Eggman. Neo Metal Sonic is quite literally a shadow of Eggman by by being Eggman, but he's not shadow. Shadow is shadow, and I don't think we have a shadow of shadow. I don't know. Does- Nepolis. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, seven works thematically, I think, and and eight do too. Five and six are just fun pieces, but it it is uh, they don't really touch upon the plot of this arc. You know, it's just very yeah. Here's Sonic. Here's Eggman. They like to fight each other. It's cool. Yeah. 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 So do you have any last minute thoughts uh, before we close it off? Before we close this off? Sweet for Zoom and Slaughter. That's the name of the play. <laughs> <laughs> Did you look it up on Facebook? Like, man, I, I, I looked it up on my Instagram. On your Instagram. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. Like I said, I, I try to block out as much of a, what, as much as possible of pandemic era theater. Including my own stuff. <laughs> but I did want to give due to everybody involved. There you go. You know, they, it, it, it was still, it was doing what you could uh, under extreme, 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 extre- circumstances. Excruciate. Yeah. Excruciate. <laughs> you know, yeah, I had a word there. I gave up on the word. That's okay. Everyone yeah, knows. That's, that's all right. <laughs> Stefan will edit it out. <laughs> oh yeah, this this whole thing like, is just going to be AI generated. We, we could oh, do that. No. <laughs> Chat GPT, write me a podcast about IDW Sonic. Oh man, you know I actually I I tried doing that of being like what going on Chat GPT and like write me an episode of FTCR and it. Oh God, <laughs> what what did it do? It, did it break? Um, okay, g- g- give me a, give me a second. Let me let me pull up the let me quickly oh, find you, the picture. You saved it. Yeah, I, I saved the picture because it was really funny. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, it, it said, uh, okay, an FTCR video about Sonic likely refers to a video created by the YouTube channel Faster Than a Cheesecake Revolution that discusses What's the Sonic that? the Hedgehog franchise. FTCR is a channel known for creating videos that feature commentary and critiques about video games with a particular focus on the Sonic series. It thinks it says we're faster than a cheesecake revolution, but That's it still the knows that we're a so- channel. Yeah, <laughs> it it know knows that, that we're a it knows we're a Sonic we knows we're a Sonic site, but it says that's what our <laughs> it's yeah chat chat GT G, chat GPT is amazing faster than a cheesecake just, revolution. I'm ready to bow down to our AI overlords and accept our fate. We are faster than the cheesecake revolution. <laughs> I want to know what the Cheesecake Revolution is. <laughs> well, the AI can't reveal all its secrets. In the beginning, there was only one kind of cheesecake. <laughs> and then eventually somebody went, what if we added some ch- cherry or strawberry drizzle? I was like, what? Ooh. What? <laughs> this is a revolution. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, right. Oh, you know, it's it's like, you know, the split between the Catholics and the Protestants where Martin Luther <laughs> hammered onto the wall. It's like, what if we added chocolate to the cheesecake? And, and it was like, no, you're a heretic. But <laughs> those, those oh, deep it, religious history references, that's what it, people it, it, listen. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. My wife is Catholic and I'm Protestant. And I've made the joke with her before. You know, babe, 500 years ago, we would have been burnt at the stake for being together. <laughs> uh, all right so uh, yeah that i think that's that's everything we got uh for for this episode <laughs> on of, that note <laughs> of untitled sonic the hedgehog idw podcast right so th- thank 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 you, Sky. Thank you, Sky, for jo- for joining us for this episode. I- I'm at so least sorry. And un- until until you <laughs> until you eventually until if if you ever catch up with the comic book again, we might we if you ever catch up with the comic book again in the future, we might ask you on again. But for now, we might say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Boom. <laughs> You got. You got to go to. You got to go to the. Got to go to the Grand Taco. You got. You got to go to the El Taco at the gym. Oh, the 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 Del Taco. Sir? The Del Taco at the gym. The Del. Actually, there's no Del Tacos around me, where I live now. What? It's just a oh. Taco Bell in local Mexican places. Damn. So thank you all for listening to this episode. Alongside the YouTube video with all the accompanying images and edits, the series is also available audio only on most of the services that matter: Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Google and Amazon Music. 
you like what you see slash heard, please do all the usual shenanigans like liking, sharing, reviewing, rating. All this helps the series grow and means a lot to me. If you like to hear the episodes early, you can subscribe to the FTCR Patreon for just $5 a month, where I get them up there basically whenever I get the audio edits done. <laughs> If you have any questions for us, you can post them in the YouTube comments or send us an email at unofficialsonicidwpodcast at gmail.com and we will discuss your thoughts. Special thanks to Tokitsune for writing the intro and outro theme song, What You're Reading, A Double for creating the thumbnail art, and our one only Smoothies for creating the logo, overlay, and border animation. And join us next time when we'll be tackling issues 9 to 12, Volume 3, The Battle for Angel Island. Working 9 to 12, it's the battle for Angel Island. Please just cut this part or just put it in the outro. <laughs> da, da, da. I'm not gonna improv the rest.